So, Ymir. It's probably safe to say that this part of Vinland Saga is the part that uh, raises the most eyebrows. Like, what is Ymir? Where did he come from? And why Yukimura? Like, <laughs> why? This character just comes out of nowhere at Floki's back and then fights Thorkel and then just buggers off with Thorkel as his new pet at the end of two chapters. Yukimura goes off like it's no big deal or hunky dory or happy go lucky and uh, as fans all we can do is make a big sigh of relief because all we know is that phew, at least this guy wasn't supernatural because that would be a problem now wouldn't it? So once again I'm going to circle back around onto Ymir and why he even exists in this manga and just trying to understand him a little bit. So if you indulge me, let's put on our little thinking caps and get our noggins joggins. But the first explanation that uh, you may come to is that Vin Saga has finally jumped the shark. This was a popular take when the chapter first came out and I don't think it takes much explanation on to why this is probably not the case. Uh, Ymir and Thorkel only fought for like barely two chapters and Ymir then just buggers off, goes somewhere else. Uh, he's not really focused on, he's not even re really that much of a spectacle because we flip the pages, turns out it's morning and Thorkel's already beaten the guy. So I don't really think that's what Yukimura was going for. And now that we're 30 chapters on into the final arc, we can clearly see Yukimura has a lot more left to say. He's not jumped the shark, he's got his best stuff still coming. And that should be expected for from a mangaka who's been thinking about making this manga even before Planetess was ever uh, published or even written, you know, and that's 20 years of time. The next idea is that it's for some sort of plot convenience, you know, Floki uh, needed a, a scapegoat and to get out of Dodge somehow, and so uh, conjuring up a magical beastie big man that's three meters tall, real hairy, that would solve the problem of Thorkel, basically. The only issue I have with this explanation is that it doesn't really seem like um, a necessary issue. Floki could have probably averted Thorkel in uh, numerous other ways. However, we do never really get this foreshadowed or uh, there's no mention of Floki's secret weapon, so maybe it did just come out of nowhere. But let's put a pin in that. I think the best way to understand Ymir is to compare him to his adversary, which is Thorkel. The war in the Baltic chapters really clarify Thorkel as this kind of tragic figure. He's this uh, perfect example of the warrior viking, but he's always just high on adrenaline and war and violence and he never gets past that. He is stuck in this. He is the greatest warrior alive. He is a self-proclaimed expert on war and we have all seen how he is pretty pathetic without it. But Thorkel is a smart guy and he's clearly shown to know that this is the type of person he is. He knows that this is his problem, but he doesn't have any reason to really want to change it. He's an addict and it's ultimately quite sad because he's doomed to this path forever, never to know what to Thor's a true warrior is, who doesn't even find out the true reason behind Thor's demise. Even when Thorfinn explains to him in a roundabout way what a true warrior is, the formation of Vinland, he just laughs off and doesn't think it's possible. He denies what he wanted to know from Thor's the most. And Thorkel is a perfect vessel for this comedic character because of his tragedy. Because this war in this arc is a joke. It's completely pointless. It's completely worthless. It's completely fabricated by Knut's desire to culminate and continue to expand his power across the Baltic Sea. And the Jorms Viking, which are introduced as this very scary warrior clan are completely humiliated throughout this arc. First, in a non-comedic way, uh, you can see this particularly in chapter 129, where the Yorms Viking abandon all sense of honor and attack Thorfinn altogether. But as we continue throughout this arc, we find more and more reasons and more and more depictions of these guys could be a complete joke. Uh, one of the best examples of this is Garm just showing everybody up, this impenetrable fortress of Jormsburg that no warrior could assail in the whole entire day that they fought. And Garm just runs up it and does a little cool pose at the top and completely undermines all of it. I think this is one of the few times that with the theming, Yukimura really puts his foot in his own mouth. 
within the final 15 chapters of this arc, there are continuous jokes that lots of the time often undercuts the tension and the severity of the whole entire arc. For example, Orm, also known as Fatty, spurs on Sigurd's entire arc as they're closing these barrels after uh, Orm alerts the guards to their presence through a fart after Gudrid already makes another fart joke, and this all climaxes with the introduction of Ymir, a big, hairy boy that calls Floki Papa and then turns out to be a bit of a wimp as he's get beat as he gets beat up by Thorkel after Thorkel does um, the, the shining reference like what is happening here and look Yukimura has supposedly stated that he wanted to make this arc a bit more light-hearted less serious than the previous two major arcs but Vinland Saga had comedy beforehand it had good comedy. Even in the Baltic Sea War, it has some of my favorite comedy. I love Bug Eyes. I love some of the Yorms Vikings conversations with some of each other. Like, those things are hilarious. But it's in those last 15 to 10 pages where we flip back and forth, and I think the comedy and the slapstick should have been turned down rather than turned up. Early on, I said we'd put a pin in that foreshadowing point. We start this arc with Thorkel fighting a big, hairy beast. A bear. Thorkel says, get me a bigger bear. And he ends this arc fighting an even bigger human, bigger than a bear. All right, all right, hold up. Cut the recording. Hold the phone, people, because I found this page and I posted it on the Discord for uh, someone not here. Link will be in the description. And uh, the absolute main man, El Asklad, is. I actually read the words here from Floki, and Floki says, Who dares to ruin Boulder's future, I will feed you to my wild dog while you're still breathing. Now, I initially, when I read this, I was like, ah, oh, of course, Garm. He's, he's, he's referring to Garm, who's uh, named after a hellhound or like a, a dog in Norse mythology. Um, but Garm here's on his side, and he's talking to Garm, and Garm doesn't eat humans. But guess who does eat humans? It's Ymir. So it turns out, guess what? Ymir was foreshadowed. Floki did talk about Ymir before he came in, just in a quite a subtle way, even though this is an incredibly foreboding panel. And then, uh, whatever. I'm just saying it was foreshadowed more directly than just Ymir, than, uh, sorry, it's Thorkel just tackling a bear. Cheers. At the same time, though, Ymir slotted into his story then used as a device for Floki to admit that he'd feed children to Ymir to spur him on to fight harder, which then spurs on Baldir to run away. Now, was Floki actually going to be a cartoonish villain that actually feed people to Ymir? No, Floki was probably just going to leave somewhere else and uh, leave his monster behind, effectively. But following these pages is some of the most heart-wrenching scenes in the Baltic Sea, as we see this lovely, lovely kid, Boulder, realized that his life is the reason why this war and destruction is happening. He thinks it'd be better for him just to end it all than to keep on fighting. He can't stop them fighting because they'll fight for him anyway. If he's dead, well, then they have nothing to fight for. But this is sandwiched by Ymir being a complete and total joke. I think Ymir is a great example of why people say that the Baltic Sea War was a step down from normal Vinland saga. And I don't think it's that complicated. The ping-ponging between different tones and tensions I think often led us as readers to be a little bit confused. I came into this expecting to find some more depth and purpose with Ymir, but alas, I couldn't find anything. All I found was Yukimura stumbling on how to deliver the final part of this really, really fantastic arc. I guess I was the fool after all. And here, once again, we end off this crappy video wondering why. What is he? Where did he come from? Why, why, why? And my only answer to that, dear viewer, is that, well, you may only knows.